Hi, this is Kevin from Aircon Sticker. We're going to cover today some of the common things the technician does that sabotages your aircon. And those that we are listing here, are, uh, as what I've uh, mentioned, is the common things a uh, technician does. And a lot of wrongdoings are, are, are actually happening in the market. So we have just listed out some of those things that uh, can cause serious damage to your aircon. And... Um, that's for you to uh, to be aware and uh, whenever you see somebody doing the wrong thing that you can tell them to stop doing that okay the number one on our list is uh, topping up of refrigerant so the refrigerant is not a magic substance it is not cold by itself scientists around the world are trying their very best to find the magic substance I'm not too sure if anybody's found that yet but what that we are very sure is that those refrigerant that goes inside your air conditioning system is definitely not that magic substance. So do not be mistaken that by adding more Freon into your system, your aircon is going to be cooler. In fact, it is just going to make it worse. So the uh, fundamental of air conditioning is that using a compressor, it compresses a gas probably about 600 times and uh, by compressing the gas hard enough and then subsequently using a fan to blow away the the uh, extra heat um, something strange happens is that this gas actually turns into a liquid so that's why um, the outdoor uh, condenser is blowing out hot air and the fan the outdoor fan is is one of the very important thing because we need the fan to get rid of the extra heat. It's only when the extra heat is being discharged that this change takes place. So, and what happens is that this liquid gas is sent in to your indoor fan coil. And your indoor fan coil has got a fan to discharge the cold air. Now it's the reverse. So, when you decompress a liquefied gas, it becomes cold. So it's just the opposite. And the outdoor condenser fan which discharged the hot air, now the indoor fan coil is going to discharge the cold air. So this is the fundamental of air conditioning. And um, the indoor uh, fan and discharge characteristics also plays a very important role. If the fan coil is choked, it cannot discharge the cold air properly and that results in cooling inefficiency. That's not because there's, there's not enough gas. So we will cover the, uh, uh, this problem more in detail in the uh, later part, which uh, I'm gonna, gonna cover on taking suction pressure as an indication for appropriate gas level. Or why not we just jump straight into this. So uh, having explained the first point is that um, the how air conditioning works is uh, through the uh, um, compression of a gas into a liquid and the decompression of gas back into a gas. So when a technician put a gas meter to check the amount of gas, what that it reads is just a gas pressure. It does not tell you exactly how much gas it has gone into the system. So when the outdoor condenser is choked or the fan is not turning fast enough, the, uh, you'll find that uh, the compressed gas does not fully turn into a liquid. So when that happens, the gas pressure will be high. Likewise, when the indoor fan coil is choked or there's something wrong with the fan that causes it not to spin fast enough, then it does not evaporate the liquid gas effectively. And as a result, it will cause the gas level to appear low. So, never take the suction pressure as an indication of the amount of gas in your system. So, there are also other reasons that can cause the gas pressure to go haywire, including a copper pipe that is bent out of shape. So, as a result, the gas does not flow through properly. And nowadays, with the um, inverter system, the energy saving system, the gas pressure becomes even more complicated because 
The inverter is a technology that regulates the compressor speed. It can cause the compressor to turn faster or slower according to the heat load condition of the aircon. So when the compressor is spinning very fast, the head pressure will be high and the suction pressure will be low. Whereas when the inverter is turning slowly, the uh, suction pressure will be high and the head pressure will be low. But and um, so before you diagnose the uh, inverter system, you have to measure the running ampere which gives you an indication on how fast the compressor is turning or otherwise this intelligent inverter system will try to balance the gas pressure especially at the suction pressure to uh, to the operating range so you put a meter in chances are every time it tells you that the gas pressure is okay unless the amount of gas has dropped so low that even the uh, the regulation, the self-regulating uh, function doesn't work anymore. So as a result, when an inverter system runs low in gas, it may go unnoticed, especially when you turn on only one or two aircon. But it may start to exhibit the problem when you turn on more. So uh, we've covered uh, point number six, and we're going to move back to... Actually, you'll find that all of the points are interlinked and uh, now let's go back to point two and you, you'll be surprised is that why such malpractice has been uh, linked to uh, point one and point six we've seen technicians climbing outside and using the gas in the aircon itself to purge the condensing coil and this happens when technicians put in the meter and find that hey, the gas pressure seems abnormally high so they have to let go of the gas or they thought that they have to get let go of the gas the fact is that as I've explained before is that if the fan coil, outdoor fan coil is choked or the fan is not turning fast enough that resulted in the liquid the gas not uh, turning into a liquid gas and as a result the gas pressure will show to be higher so if a technician were to take that information blindly that is taking suction pressure as an indication of the appropriate gas level they will end up releasing the extra gas so and uh, finding that to release the extra gas is such a waste they point the gas onto the fan coil to blow away the dust so this is not the right thing to do because not only is it illegal for causing ozone depleting especially if yours is still running on the R22 gas it is also a very wrong thing to do because the gas itself is going to corrode the aluminum fin on the heat exchanger so now we're going to cover the uh, the third common mistakes uh, addition does is that is to do a full chemical cleaning or they call it the full chemical overhaul without ensuring total removal of water and water moisture so um, okay down here I'm gonna quote you one very good example one of the very good example is uh, is the full chemical cleaning that is conducted by Sanyo itself so a Sanyo technician comes into your apartment, dismantle the fan coil, brings it back to their workshop at the uh, Tota, and they have a huge washing bay with adequate high pressure water to clean your fan coil properly. And um, after cleaning the uh, fan coil, they will connect the fan coil to a dry nitrogen and purge it to ensure that the uh, water or water moisture is removed from the uh, tank and also they will conduct a pressure test to make sure that the fan coil is not leaking but the um, according to market feedback is that uh, it takes about three days before they return your aircon so as a result a very good practice is uh, rarely adopted in the market as uh, people find themselves not able to uh, live without aircon for about three days so 
then it evolved uh, evolve into a method where technicians dismantle the aircon, brings it into your toilet for chemical cleaning. And obviously, these guys are not bringing a huge tank of dry nitrogen. And obviously, it's subjected to the uh, water pressure that's available in your estate. So if your water pressure is low, then you will find that uh, you may not be able to fully uh, purge or remove the dirt out from the uh, fan coil. And uh, we have published a... Uh, we have uploaded a video uh, on actually a cleaning method. Uh, okay, down here. Why is it important to use high pressure water in chemical cleaning? I, I suggest that you watch this video and see for yourself why is it so important to use high pressure water because the lack of adequate high pressure water is going to push the dirt further into the fan coil and um, making the cleaning ineffective so back to this point where on the uh, food dismantling of uh, fan coil without ensuring that the um, water or water moisture is been removed this will this will result in um, in uh, contamination of the uh, gas system and the presence of this water moisture actually destroys the um, compressor oil and uh, once the compressor oil is damaged it results in high friction which produces a lot of heat and abrasion and this may cause um, high running ampere which then results in premature breakdown of electrical relays starting capacitors and um, it may, uh, if it's uh, too bad and becoming too hot, it can trigger an overload relay that shuts down the compressor. And once the compressor overheats, it, it, it takes about one or two hours before it cools down by itself and, um, and compressor start running. So if you find your compressor like taking a rest for more than one to two hours, chances are you're experiencing a compressor overheating problem so but um, a compressor can be overheated due to many reasons which includes that the outdoor condenser is choked the fan is turning too slowly or the compressor itself having this uh, uh, lubricating problem damaged compressor oil which causes uh, excessive uh, wear and tear so um, so, but since we are going to cover this point is on the topic of uh, removal of water and water moisture, we're going to quickly move on to point number four. We'll be covering in details in other sections of, um, of my video. So, another problem associated with the uh, overhaul is that while doing so, it can cause the, um, the uh, copper pipe to leak as especially at the flare so we have also published a uh, we have also uploaded a video on uh, damage to copper pipe um, largely due to the uh, copper integrity problem especially in recent years when copper price has gone up like seven to ten times so manufacturers are using recycled copper and uh, or otherwise they might be adding impurities like aluminum or some other metal into the copper in doing so it affects the characteristic of the copper copper which has been used as a uh, gasket material or o-ring because of the copper characteristic of being uh, relatively soft now with this impurity in it, it's uh, behaving very much differently. It can easily crack or it's not that soft which um, prevents, which, which makes it exceptionally difficult for the technician to properly tighten a copper flare uh, without gas leak, especially a second time. The first time you tighten it, it, it has actually become hard and you tighten it a second time uh, it may not seal properly. If you tighten it too hard, it cracks. 
So that's why, especially given the fact that it most likely you might be uh, getting a recycled copper installed, especially for new aircon, uh, do not dismantle them for full chemical cleaning as the chance of introducing a gas leak is exceptionally high. So uh, I, I would strongly request, um, recommend, or advise you to watch the other part of my video on the copper gas leak uh, in support of uh, this point that I've mentioned to you. So point number five is also linked to the uh, previous one that I've uh, mentioned before. The removal of the overload relay. As I've mentioned before that the compressor can get overheated and there's this device that sits directly on top of a compressor which is what we call an overheating or overload relay. So, and uh, if the compressor shuts down and the technician attempts to bring the compressor back to life by removing the overload relay, then it can cause you some serious damage. It's, it's not the case whereby you remove the over, overload relay, you, you, you push the compressor hard, uh, give it um, as much time as you, as you can, squeeze that last drop out of the compressor. No, it's not this case. And um, that's because the overload relay is a device that trips when the compressor has overheated above 150 degrees Celsius. Why is it 150 degrees Celsius? That's because it's found that the compressor oil will fully disintegrate above 150 degrees Celsius. So if you don't protect it and you allow the temperature to go above that, the compressor is going to lose all of its lubricating properties, which then cause further wear and tear, which becomes a vicious cycle. The compressor becomes even hotter so it goes on and on and on and if the temperature were to exit out 250 degrees celsius the r22 gas is going to break down and produce acid in the presence of water moisture so it's all linked you know from the full dismantle process until this point and uh, this is going to be the worst case because um, then you will find that the acid is traveling through the entire copper pipe system and as you know acid is going to corrupt matter and that may result in the copper pipe running out of gas because it corrodes into the pipe and replacing copper pipes might be a homeowner's worst nightmare so the we've, we've covered the the end of the copper pipe related problem we're gonna cover one last point which is the use of hot steam to disinfect air conditioners we all know that steam hot temperature kills germs kills bacteria and um, but to use it directly on the fan coil is not a good idea because first of all is that Yes, it kills the bacteria, it disinfects it, but it's, it doesn't have the enough pressure to remove the chokage. So, if it does not remove the chokage, your icon is not going to improve in its performance. The damage that can be caused by this overheating of the fan coil is that we've got this device called thermistor that is uh, connected to your fan coil. Thermistor is a device that measures the temperature. It comes from two words. One is uh, resistor and one is thermal, which is temperature. So this is an e electrical device that changes its resistance as temperature changes. So it's normally working in a comfortable range between 10 to 28 degrees Celsius. Despite a scientific uh, lab test that this device can uh, work uh, somewhere between minus 50 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius and uh, but I still don't think it's a good idea to heat it up to 100 degrees Celsius when it has always been comfortable co comfortable working at a, a much lower temperature range um, there is a stage 
there was a there's a period of time where where servicing company are introducing steam cleaning and uh, during those times we receive a lot of calls to repair or to replace a faulty thermistor so we, we do think there's a high correlation between thermistor uh, damage versus the uh, using of hot steam um, nowadays uh, most companies have stopped offering this service um, for obvious reason in that it is not effective at all so we have uh, covered um, six common mistakes technicians does that sabotages your aircon and of course there are many things you, you you'll be surprised at the amount the number of things uh, technicians can be doing uh, wrongly that can sabotage your aircon and I'll try to add more if I can find any more and uh, do keep a lookout and uh, by being informed, uh, it helps to protect your investment. Thank you very much. My name is Kevin from Aircon Bye-bye.